Uh, uh, hi. Hi, we're back. I mean, I guess, yeah, I'm back. I was here yesterday. I was talking to some of you guys, and now we're gonna watch... We're gonna watch the Volume 4 finale. It's been a long freaking time coming. How long have we been watching Volume 4 at this point? Like, two years? Jesus Christ. But we're, we're doing it. It's happening. We started in 2022. Jesus. Look. Look, I've been I've been doing my best. Okay, we're we're it's gonna we're it's gonna be done now. We're gonna be done. Volume four. <laughs> this this absolute journey of a volume. It's gonna be done. Yeah. Hi. Hello, everyone. Just five more to go. Yeah. Yeah. It's gonna take me freaking decades. Well, hopefully not. If we're doing it this way, hopefully it'll take shorter time because it was taking me so long because of the way I was doing it. So hopefully doing it this way, we'll do it faster. Yeah, hopefully with this method, we'll get through it faster. That'll, that's, that's the goal, at least, and we'll see how it goes. It'll only take centuries now. Yeah, yeah, I'm aware that it was taking way too long to watch anything. Before I start, I guess I'll do a little little summary of where we where we left off. Uh, Yang and Blake and Weiss have finished their little plot lines. Yang is on her way to well, it's not clear actually. She it's I think she's going to Ruby, but it's also very possible she's going to go look for Raven. So Yang is on her way away from her house to, I think, Ruby, but also possibly Raven. I mean, whatever, whatever chance is she gonna, is she ever gonna get another chance to look for Raven? So I guess that would, this would be a good time to do it. But personally, I think she's gonna prioritize going to Ruby than her own stuff. Cause I mean, she already sped up her healing process because she wanted to go help Ruby. So this wouldn't be the first time. Weiss is leaving the manor and going to... She's also on her way to Mistral because Winter is there and she's going to go meet up with her sister. And honestly, good for her. Because it mean Because she's finally getting out of that goddamn house and that's going to be great news. Blake is still in Menagerie, but she's going to work on the whole White Fang liberation nonsense front. Going to try to make the White Fang not a terrorist group anymore, which is freaking rad. Good for her, honestly. And then we're back with uh, sad kids in the forest who are being extra sad. And there's a giant freaking Grim about to attack them. And Ren's gonna probably have to go through and work through his trauma in the most visceral, <laughs> hands-on way anyone has ever done. Because, like, this thing that killed all of his family... I do love the sad kids in the forest. I'm a big fan of the sad kids in the forest. Because uh, he's gonna have to, like, freaking fight the thing that killed his whole family and... Well, not his whole family, but you, you guys know what I mean. He's gonna have to fight the thing that destroyed his life and is now putting the people he loves in danger again because everything is a cycle. So, uh, and Crow is still poisoned, so hopefully he becomes... I hope he doesn't die. Out of all of them, somebody asked me yesterday if I think anyone's gonna die. Uh, and I don't think anyone is gonna die, but if anyone does, Crow is the most likely one. I really hope nobody dies. Because I love all of these characters, and also, it, and also, honestly, I don't think it would be very good writing to have people die in every finale from here on out. That's just, it would become too predictable and would make the deaths. So, uh, yeah, I'm gonna gonna get this episode started. It's called No Safe Haven, which I assume is a reference to the. The, the school, the school's named Haven, right? They keep mentioning that they're going to Haven Academy. So I, I assume that's a nice little pun reference to, to the fact that the Academy is called Haven. 
and also the fact that, well, quite obviously, they're in the place that Ren used to live, and it's not a safe haven for him anymore because it was all destroyed. And I guess Nora lived there too. I don't know how long Nora lived there, but um, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna get this started. So let's go. I'm gonna get rid of this little you. You go away, little up, up thingy. Get out of here. I probably, uh, it's, it's been a while, so I don't know if I've mentioned this, actually, but I really love this intro song. It's out of the ones that there are, this is my, I like the, in order, my favorite one is probably volume two, and then this one. I really love this song. But yeah, I really like this intro song. I'm excited to be able to... I'm excited to be able to listen to the lyrics uh, fully and get to hear the whole song. So, but let's, uh, let's get into this episode. Or chapter, I guess, because they're called chapters. Okay, so the, the, the fight's already started. Oh dang, the fight's really started. Oh heck, I just realized they wouldn't have been able to get Crow to safety before starting this. I don't know if I'm ready for a, a full actual look at this th this thing, because... Uh, oh no, Ren! I think that's the most emotion I've we've ever seen from Ren, honestly. Oh, okay. I mentioned, I mentioned before. I mentioned before that I like, I really love body horror stuff. But the twitching, the twitching of the fingers, <laughs> I don't like the twitching. And okay, you gotta understand when I say I don't like something, it means I, I, I really like it. But like, I don't like, I don't like the twitching fingers. <laughs> I don't like the. It's the, it's not so much the, the twitching itself, it's the sound effect. It's the, it's the, the crunchy k bone clicking sound effect that they put with it. Oh, all the bones, all the bone cracking from the thing. I hate it. Oh my boy. My boy going and say and wanting to help wanting to help Crow immediately. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Wait. I always thought Grim can see. Can Grim not see? Can they only see emotions? Can they only see emotions? I always thought that they could see things. Not just... So, like, I assumed that Ren's power made it useful, because, like, if they're not looking at you, you can sneak past, but, like, I didn't realize that Grimm just... They don't actually have functioning eyes. Or just... Or is it just, like, this one doesn't have functioning eyes? Also, I love that after getting smacked around for a little bit, their first thought... My boy... My boy... His first thought was, okay, I don't actually need to fight. I need to get Crow to safety. Someone needs to take care of this. Okay, so it hasn't, it, even at this point, it hasn't been explained whether they can see. I like that explanation, that they, that they can see you, but they don't register that you're a living thing. That's, inter that's an interesting take on it, honestly. I, I like that take. But I, I really wasn't expecting it to just, for 
him to go for Ren to use his semblance and for to just immediately stop dead and be like, oh, where did you go? Then his, then his semblance might be more, it might be more complicated than what I originally thought. It might not just be emotions. It might be like cloaking your whole aura or whatever. I'll have to think about that. Just get him to safety. Yeah, don't don't dawdle, John. Okay, Crow Crow's not entirely invalid. He's, he can at least walk a little bit. I bet Crow freaking hates this, that he has to sit out while the kids defend him. I I would hate this. Uh Oh, they had a little moment. They had a little moment together. That was like, that was like Crow being like, it's, I can't do it, so it's your, Guys, I'm charging you keep with keeping, moving. with making Don't sure circle. everyone keeps safe. Little strategist. Man, this really is like a video game boss fight. Stay out of range of the attacks, just keep circling so it doesn't, so that when it tries to hit you, it's behind. Man, it would really, it must really suck to not have a ranged weapon at this moment. What you I don't know what, you, you need that! <laughs> Hold on a sec. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> wait, the, so... So I've been wondering off screen, I haven't mentioned it in a while because nothing happened with it, but I've been wondering for a while because he said he got his weapon upgraded. Did he upgrade it to be a bigger sword <laughs> instead of getting a ranged weapon? I'm so, I'm, honestly, this is the most in-character thing he ever could have done to be like, no, I don't need a ranged weapon. What if my sword was bigger? Oh, but actually, now that I'm thinking, oh, I mentioned yesterday that somebody asked what my favorite symbolism is, and I like that I like the the way the weapon symbolism is. And God, he just it's his sheath, it's the the sheath that turns into the bigger sword. Let me let me go back and look. It's his it's the Yeah, it's the it's the sheath that turns into the bigger sword. So like he doesn't, but his sheath is also the shield, so he doesn't get to have the shield when he's doing it this way, right? Is that, is that what I'm, is that the point, that he doesn't get to have his shield while he's, oh. sacrificial ass idiot, you need that. <laughs> you need that to fight prop, you... 90% of your fighting experience has been fighting with a sword and a shield. You can't just switch to having a bigger sword and expect that to go well. No, you need... You can't just sacrifice all of your defense to get to hit thing. To get to have a bigger sword. No, 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 that's not... I'm gonna talk about this more, but for now we're gonna continue. For now we're gonna continue. Oh, she looks so excited to see the weapon upgrade. It's nice to see her still get excited about that. Oh, well, Naki didn't like that. Didn't like that hit. Oh, what in the sweet hell? What in the, what in the fresh hell is this? What is this, Not With the pinwheel arms? Uh-uh, uh-uh. I don't like that its arms can get longer. I don't like that its arms can get longer and shorter. That, that's not fun. Oh, we've reached the second phase. Second phase of the boss fight. Oh, it ripped the tenderly things. The tenderly things on it. Oh. It's interesting to me that Ren and Nora didn't react to the scream. Only John and Ruby did. It really shows... It, it, I like that Ren and Nora react didn't react to it because it shows how they've had to they've had to f fight 
honest, they've had to fight more grim than Ruby and John have because they grew up in the wilderness as opposed to in a town or whatever. But I like that when it did its big scream, it like, I, you can't see this. I don't have a, I don't have a video on, but it's a, it like ripped its, its little tendril things that was keeping its mouth shut so that it could scream louder. Is it trying to like summon allies or whatever, or is it just screaming for the joy of screaming? Yeah, it's not, yeah, don't mention that they don't have bones. That doesn't, that, no, that's, that's, I don't like that. I don't like that. Uh-uh. <laughs> it's not better that they don't have bones. <laughs> that's worse, in fact. Well, they do have bones. They just, they aren't structural. They're there for literally just intimidation purposes. Ren also keeps just running in and not thinking things through. And I hate it. He's usually such... A like, and I realize now that it's probably mostly because of reliance on his semblance, but it's not, I don't like seeing him get, like, I don't like seeing him get overwhelmed by his emotions. It hurts, because it shows how much this is affecting him. No, 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 don't get, don't get him, he's, he's stuck, don't get him, don't get him. All these kids, all these kids are so self-sacrificial. I need them to care about themselves as much as they care about other people. God, I was so scared that just, it, like, grabbed her at the torso. I was so scared she got, like, claws in her chest. Stop looking. <laughs> <laughs> it's fun to have little moments of comedy, little moments of comedy. I don't like the twitching, the whole torso moving. Oh, oh, no, 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 Herora, she needs that. No, 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 no. Ren, focus on getting out of the thing, not on shooting it. You'll be able to do so much more if you can get out of the thing. No, don't just keep running in. God, his expressions here, the animators really, they, they really just didn't. Ren, knock it off. Oh, it's good to good to know that I'm not the only one who thinks this is fucked. My boy, Ren, you need to calm down. You need to think with. I know this is like all the trauma for you. I know this is like I know this is like all the trauma for you all at once, and that this is probably the first time in I don't know how many years you were like. It's unclear how old you were when this happened at first. I'm gonna. But, you looked like seven or eight. So it's been like, it's been like a decade since this happened, but like, I, it, I hate it so much how much you're not acting like yourself. It's, it's disturbing on a level that I was not expecting to see you acting like this, acting just so much unlike Ren. But also, I guess it's sort of refreshing to see that the other people around him, the Ruby and, and John and Nora, are looking at this and being like, "Oh, actually, he's he. This is this is something is not going right. Something is this is bad. This is not going correctly." And they immediately clocked that he's acting out of the ordinary. I love that they know him well enough to clock that. Like, this isn't normal Ren anger. He is being unnecessarily reckless and putting himself in danger because he wants to kill this thing, regardless of if it kills him. He just wants it dead because it hurt him in the past. And I hate that they, that he's, that he is acting this way because it shows how much he never processed any of this trauma at all. Oh, Nora. You can see how much this is hurting her. Look at that face! Look at his face! Oh, they... You guys gotta move. You can't just... Thank you. Fucking Christ. Thank you, Nora. Wait, it didn't hit the house, though. Why didn't it have the house, though? Damn, did you stop that? 
Okay, so now it's just John and Ruby, because Ren and Nora's auras are both gone. Nora, let go. Nora, don't let go. He's Nora, gonna try to get hurt if he's we gonna don't... run in and almost Oh dang. No. I won't let you kill yourself like this. Oh, Nora. After everything we've been through. I won't let it end. Oh. Not like this. Oh, ki oh kiddo. Okay, that really hit me. Ren just seeing her as as she was when they first met. Oh. Is this a, it, it would it would really oh god Nora she cares about him so much and they and they all care about him they're all friends but but it's different for Nora and Ren like the reason Nora is Nora is because he came and comforted her under back when his house his world was falling apart and I love Nora being like no, 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 I'm not going to let you kill yourself like this. I'm not going to let you get so consumed by your anger and your hatred that you stop being the person I love. Like, that That really, <laughs> that really hit me, man. And him seeing her as the way that she was when they first met, the which is so different than how she is now. She's not that scared little girl anymore, but she's still... She is still scared. She is, honestly, she is still a little girl. Neither, none of these people are old enough to be going through this nonsense. Not that you're ever, not that there's like, once you hit 40, you're allowed to go through trauma. But like, no, it's, it, she's, she's scared. But this time she's not scared of the monster. She's scared for him. She's scared of, she's scared of losing somebody she loves in the same way that he lost someone he loves to this same monster. She doesn't want it to lose him because for the longest time he was all that she had and God, God, ow. <laughs> Literally smacking some sense into him to get him to stop running in and almost dying because he doesn't care about himself and just wants the thing to die. God, that, <laughs> that one hurts. That one hurts me. Oh, and he finally gets it. You finally get it, Ren. He gets it, but... Yeah, yeah, he gets it, but he still wants the thing to die. And I agree, it should die, but you gotta do this smart. You can't just keep running in. And it's his dad's knife. He still has it. Dang. Yeah, like what Nora said, we, you guys can do this. You just gotta, you gotta do this smart. You can't just keep running in and trying to do it by yourself. The point of teams of Huntsmen is that you can, you're stronger when you work together. That's the point of this whole show. Oh, all these kids! Immediately, oh, <laughs> these kids! <laughs> Immediately figuring out a way that's like, yes, we can we can take this down if we're if we work together. But letting Ren have the final blow because it means something personally to him, and not even needing to talk about it. Not even, Ruby and Jean weren't there for that little conversation under the house. They were they were just immediately saw them come out from underneath it and were like, okay. We need to make sure that Ren is the one to kill this thing, because he deserves to have that closure. God. God, these kids. Thor with her mighty hammer. I always love, it's used so often, but it, it always gets me when Ren uses, when Ruby uses the momentum of her sight to blast around. It's done so well. Okay, so that's one arm down. I guess we're trying to immobilize the thing so that. No. Oh, 
Ren using John's shield. I love. It always gets me when these when they use their other weapons. Yes! Yes, Nora! Yes, yes, yes! It's good. Can they, can Grim feel pain? This, it, se it certainly seems like it can feel at least an approximation of pain. Oh, him not flinching in the scream, yes! For my mother. For my father. Okay, so both arms gone. For all those that you've slain. For myself. Oh, baby! Dang, man! Dang, man! Saying all the, the people that he's killing it for. His family, everyone that, that it's hurt. And then also for him, because it it didn't kill him, but it, it hurt him in a way that it's so personal. And, and he's never going to be that little carefree kid again because this thing took his whole childhood away from him. And... Ah... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, and he only said that bit out loud. That's the only bit he said out loud. It's like that. I feel like he, that's the only bit he said out loud because, like, until this moment, he hadn't allowed himself to process that this thing didn't just hurt other people. It hurt him. It hurt him, you know? It didn't just kill his mom or kill his or kill his dad. I mean, it didn't kill his mom, but it was at fault for killing his mom. It didn't just hurt other people, it hurt him, you know? And I feel like him saying that out loud was him finally acknowledging that, yes, this thing, this, this grim that destroyed my life destroyed my life. It didn't just hurt other people, it hurt me. And that's just, that's that's just really good writing. <laughs> that's, I really like that. That's what that's really well done. Also, I've mentioned it before, but God, it must help with cleanup to just be like, oh yeah, the Grimm's killed, and it will just evaporate back into smoke. And I'm all just standing there, watching him. It's just, it's really good. Okay, now you guys go take a freaking nap, because Jesus Christ. Oh, Oh, and he, he hugs her in return. Okay, good. Okay, good. I was worried. Because if they were going to kill him, having him die off screen while they were doing all of that, that would have been the moment. Oh, him immediately saying that she did a good job. Ooh, these... They look different than the ones from... From Vale. Does each kingdom have, like, a different design for how their airships look? I like that these ones have wings. It's a nice touch. Oh, they're, fin they're finally gonna get him to get some freaking medical attention. Jesus. Taken them long enough. I mean, I don't know how long it's taken them, but it's been too long. Shocked, Mans is still alive. How did you find us out here? We were on patrol and saw the smoke. No one's been out here for years. Yeah, that that'll do it. Be wrong. What if we don't make it in time? Ruby. Oh. Oh, it's so pretty. Like, Vale just looked like a city city. Look at this thing. It's all... Dang, they really took their Asian... <laughs> they really took their freaking Asian influences, didn't they? Look at that goddamn pagoda on the top of the mountain. But the, the terraced... The terraces... Oh, that's really cool. I always love uh, fantasy and real-world cities like this that are built into the mountains and have layers. It's, it's They're so cool to me. 
Probably because I live in New Jersey, which is the flattest place in the world, and there aren't hills, let alone mountains, but like, goddamn, that's so pretty. Also, they finally made it. It's taken them a whole volume, and who knows how many months of travel, but they're finally here. Oh, these two. Oh, the look he gives her. Oh! Oh, the hand. Oh, the... Oh! Also, isn't this... Wait a second. Wait a second, I recognize this song. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I gotta think, I gotta think. I recognize this. This is one of the songs that we listened to already. I can't remember what it's called. Because I'm really bad at names. I can't remember what it's called. Is there, is, wasn't there a song in, like, volume one or two from Nora's point of, point of view talking about how she feels about Ren? Isn't that... It sounds like that. Is it that song? Oh, I got it! I, is It's called Boop? Oh, of course it's called Boop. But, but I, I got it, yes. But him being the one to reach out this time instead of Nora, because it's always been Nora up until this point, but Ren reaching out to her and holding her hand. Oh! It's like... Holding people's hands in Ruby is like such a thing it's like such a thing because it seems to be more indicative of being in a loving somebody else and being in a relationship than actually kissing or anything or saying that or anything because like that's how he, that's how ruby was with penny they she as soon as penny was doubting ruby was immediately like no i have to hold your hands and reassure you that you're okay when Pyrrha was doubting herself. Jean was like, no, I have to hold your hand and reassure you that I'm here for you. And uh, I don't remember it happening, but it, it freaking must have. But I mean, Blake and Yang have their own thing going on. Like, they're clearly... They, they don't need to hold hands at this point. It's not subtext. It's just text at this point. But okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I knew, I knew it must have happened. The, the way that... And then Ren and Nora here. It's just like... It's like these characters are saying it, it's not about overt explanations of love. It's about how the things that seem platonic can mean so much more if you just it can mean so much more to them because they already understand what's going on. But it's also I love how like how touchy feely these characters are. They're not afraid to show their love for the other for each people for each of them you know they're constantly being like hol holding the other characters or putting their hands on their shoulders or holding their hands i love that they're like no i care about this person and i need to show them that i care about them i need to hold them in my arms and show them that i that i i want to protect them from danger and i want them to be safe and i love how much yeah, unashamed love and joy un uh, in an unashamed open display. Yeah, 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 yeah. I love how how clear it is that these kids care about each other so much. It's it's done it's done so well. Okay, freaking finally. We've made it. Oh, thank freaking God he's getting medical attention. <laughs> it's only taken, what, a week? It's been a while since we've seen Ruby inside a house. It's been a while since Ruby has felt safe enough that she can put her own weapon down. Oh, he looks peaceful instead of 
in pain like he has for the longest time. I, I've got handwritten stuff's never been seen. I've got I've got bad news, Ruby. <laughs> I've got bad looking news. I don't think any of your letters have reached home. They don't know how you're doing at all. Cause I think they mentioned that actually, that they haven't heard from Ruby at all since she left. But she's been writing them letters. She's been writing them letters. <laughs> well, she's been writing them letters updating them. Oh, sweetie. Anyway, in case you haven't been getting them, I want to say I'm sorry for leaving the way I did. It's not your fault, you Ruby. It was a reckless idea, and after everything I've been through, I can definitely say you were right. It was reckless, but it was necessary. Someone had to do something. On all of us. And I'm not just talking about the monsters we fought out here. Okay. You can hide oh, it's waste time, I can tell. I'll take you as far as I can, but if we get caught, you're on your own. Understand? I can- her music's playing. Yeah, there she is. Oh, she's- she's like bribing a guy to get out of this- to get out of Atlas. Okay, I gotta pause. I'm getting like a million but Who the fuck is Pilot Boy? What do you mean it's the boy? Do you- is this guy like a character? Does he come- I just met Pilot- but I met Pilot- who's- who the fuck is Pilot Boy? I get that it's this guy. This guy who's gonna smuggle Weiss out of the- what- but what's the significance? Does she- is he just- ask Pilot. Okay, hold on, hold on. I'm texting her, she's not in the room with me. Oh, I s Are you fucking serious? Are you fucking serious? Is that why she's called Pilot? Is that why Pilot is called- is- Are you fucking serious? Is she <laughs> I thought it was just a fun nickname that she came up- No! It's no, 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 that can't- No. <laughs> no, you're- You're fucking with me, that can't No, she just- She just fucking confirmed it. Are you telling me that her- her username? Because I know she's called Pilot Boy, but I thought that was just... No. <laughs> no, that can't... I'm fucking furious. I'm fucking fur- I hate- I hate this. I hate it here. This is- I'm fucking- No. <laughs> Search your feelings, you know. I don't have to be happy about it being true. <laughs> I'm gonna focus on Weiss getting out of the- getting out of the kingdom and not on this fucking nonsense. I have to move on! I have to move on! No, no, no! I'm- I'm, I'm continuing! I'm continuing! God damn it! You woke up wondering if just over the next hill would be something good. Or something terrible. I liked Weiss's- I'm moving on. I liked Weiss's little- it's Musical sting coming in. What's going to happen next? And the things we do know now, just how bad it can get. Oh, and Blake, her her theme from her trailer is playing. You told me once that bad things just happen. You were angry when you said it, and I didn't want to listen. But you were right. She's on the freaking. The boat is called Pride. Are you serious? Gay ass boat for this. <laughs> Dang, y'all ain't subtle at all. There's no. S this ain't subtle. This is just text. This isn't subtext. <laughs> oh, I didn't even notice. Hold on. She has a new outfit. I just. Oh. What the. F what's this like. This like collar thing she's got going on? What is this? I like her. Her jacket. 
But I don't know. I don't understand this collar thing that she has. Oh, yeah. Well, who needs biker safety when you have a force field? When you have a magic force field, who needs who needs biker safety? Right. Bad things do happen. All the time. Every day. Which is why Aww. I'm out here to do whatever I can, wherever I can, and hopefully do some good. Yeah, I'm seeing those parallels between... We oh, I gotta pause before we get to sad boy John hours. I gotta pause. Um, I, I was seeing those parallels between... What are they called? Ty... D, 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 Crow's old team. What's what's their team called? Stark. Stark, that's right. I'm, I'm seeing the parallels between Stark being, like, the failed first attempt and Ruby being the one that's succeeding... Because their Stark broke apart and they never came back together, but Ruby broke apart and they're they're on their they're finding their ways back to each other. So like I'm I'm seeing the parallels, Kruby. I'm seeing what you're putting down. I'm picking it up. I'm I'm not emotionally ready for sad boy John hours. I mean that's been that's been every scene he's been in this volume, but I'm I'm not emotionally prepared for it. Uh, the, the sword and the shield with the pure metal. Uh, <laughs> uh, and <laughs> the knife. His dad's knife. But if we gave up every time we lost, then we'd never be able to move forward. This is the shit I'm talking about. The physical comfort. Look at these kids. <laughs> Look at these kids immediately coming in and being like, oh, my friend is sad. I have to, I have to comfort them. I have to be there. God. Oh. Oh, that's not necessary. No. No, that edit isn't necessary. Oh. I don't remember who Miles Luna is. <laughs> I don't remember who that is, but God, that edit is the, it's the, it's the shot of Pira from, uh, oh, you're all telling me who Miles is. Oh, it's, it's the right, oh, it's one of the, he's one of the writers and he's John. Okay, okay, okay. I, I, I now remember one, you guys have told me that multiple times. I keep, for, I don't, I'm not good at names. It, I can only take so much, uh, but it, freaking, the freaking Pira ghost leaning on John's shoulder. Team Juniper. Oh. Miles Luna, you're right to tear up. I'm doing it. Oh. And oh, now that we're, now that I'm paused, I might as well talk about it. The freaking the, the the sword and the shield leaning on each other. Each with Pyrrha's medal embedded in them, and him just sitting there looking at them and being all, having his sad boy hours, and then Ren coming in and leaning his his father's knife against them, the 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 people that they've lost. <laughs> ah, what's in the box? Pain. Don't you do me. You're right, though. What's in this box? <laughs> pain. Pain and sadness. The, the the people that they've lost still being with them in some form, but also still being gone. And them comforting each other in their loss. <laughs> ah. Also, I recognize this song. I think it was in the credits. I think it was in the credits of Volume 3, but I haven't listened to it yet. We'd never have this, Did I li I, this song feels familiar. I, have I listened to this song? It's been so long since I've done a soundtrack reaction. I've heard this somewhere. I know it's in the credits. Somebody who has... 
Don't you mock the pain in my voice. Oh, I didn't even, I was, I was too busy thinking about the song. Uh, I, I didn't notice. She's still, or the world around us. she still has the banner from the original White Fang. Son over here looking like a pinup girl, my boy. But she's gonna... Oscar wanted to be someone that could make a difference. City of but not like this. I wonder if eventually... I wonder if eventually Oscar would have wanted to become a hero. Wanted to, Would have wanted to become a huntsman, but... But not like this. He was, he's been introduced just this first volume, but I already love him. I love Oscar. He's just a little guy. I don't remember these guys' names. I remember her name, because she was in, like, she was here recently. Her name is Ilya, but I don't remember these guys' name. They're, I remember they're shady as fuck, but I don't remember their names. Because there are plenty of people out there who are still lost. And even more who will try to gain everything they can from their sorrow. Y'all aren't subtle. There are plenty of people who are still lost, and people who will gain everything from their sorrow while looking at while looking at Ilya. <laughs> I'm picking up what you're putting down. I don't know what's going on with Ilya. There's stuff happening with her. Clearly, you saying that she's still lost, and the, and the fact that she knows Blake. There's something going on there. I'm gonna ha I'm gonna think about it and come back to it. But there's the the not they they deliberately it, they covered that bit deliberately. They they put that line of dialogue over. I'm bad at. I mentioned this at the beginning that. You guys are going to find out that I'm a lot less verbose when I can't edit what I'm saying, that I'm better at typing things out because then I can be like, okay, that sounds like shit. Let's type this out and actually make it sound better. But now with the, the rambling, you guys are going to hear, oh, wait, actually, she's an idiot. Uh, but the, 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 they did it. Delib I got to slow down. They didn't. It wasn't a coincidence that they put that line of people being lost and other people taking advantage of their pain. It wasn't a coincidence that they put that line of dialogue over Ilya kneeling in front of the, the two brothers. That's not a coincidence. I'm doing my best on the fly. I'm trying... I gotta see what's happening with the bad guys now. Oh, well, Cinder certainly seems to be. I know it can feel impossible. Like every single day is a struggle against some unstoppable monster we can never oh. defeat. Oh. I don't like that smile, Salem. I don't like that smile, Salem. I don't like her being like, ah, yes. Give in to your hate. Is it... Cinder only being able to control her powers and let them loose properly because she's doing... She's trying to... She's killing an illusion of Ruby. I don't like that. I'm sure this is going to help Cinder get over her trauma. I'm sure this is good therapy. Salem's never heard of the word therapy. She sees this girl having a traumatic episode and is like, yes, I can use this. Uh oh, I don't like, I don't like Emerald making, I mean, obviously she was asked to do this. That's what the snap was about. I don't like Cinder being like, I know what I can use to make me feel the emotions I need to be able to use the maiden powers. I need to 
to pretend that I'm killing Ruby Rose over and over and over again. I don't like that. That doesn't bode well for the future. Salem knows what therapy is. So she, yeah. yeah, 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 that's exactly right. I don't like that grin, Miss Queen of the Grim. Uh-uh. If not for us, then for the people we've already... Oh, Ruby. Then for the people we haven't lost yet. Oh, Ruby. Oh. Oh, kiddo. I desperately need someone to give Ruby a hug. I miss you so much. I miss Weiss and Blake, too. They're on their way. We'll be together soon enough. Yeah, you ran into Uncle Crow. He definitely wasn't following you the whole fucking time. Hey. Aren't I normally the one saving you? Oh, he's okay! He's going to take us to see Professor Lionheart, the headmaster of Haven Academy. Oh yeah, I forgot. I totally forgot he's got Osmond's cane. Okay, so. If you join us, he could tell you himself. So that's establishing that. That's establishing that Ruby that Yang does not know about the maiden powers because it's sensitive information. Ruby's not telling her in the letter. Okay, literally the, the choice laid out in front of her. You are in so much trouble when I find you. And that doesn't... Yang, I need you to be less vague. Don't you pronoun game me. I need to know who you're talking about. Ruby Rose. Don't you say just... Don't... Yang, don't you just be like, you are in so much trouble. Per specify. Specify who you're talking about. I need to know whether you're like, you as in, uh, Ruby, you're gonna be in so much trouble, haha, -ha, or you, uh, Raven, are legitimately going to be in trouble because you're a terrible mother. I need, to, don't you pronoun game me, I need to know. It's a nice library. I don't know where the fuck we are. She's. I'd love to hear back from you and Dad. Ruby, I've got bad news. She's already gone. She's never gonna get this letter. Oh, it's his office. Now that we've made it across the animal. Oh, the tea set. Really think Yo, Osmond, you literally couldn't resist being like, if I'm giving him a tea set, it needs to follow my aesthetic. Wait. Wait. <laughs> Wait, no. <laughs> Wait, no. Why is this guy here? No. You- I don't remember your name, you're one of the bad guys! <laughs> don't you, I can't believe it's gotten worse, uh-uh! Why is one of the bad guys here? We can't have another freaking- uh, another freaking academy be infiltrated? And he's just- he- this isn't even infiltration, my man's is casually having tea with somebody from Osbin's inner circle. This is not- this isn't better than- <laughs> You understand this is worse, right? This is worse than being infiltrated. This is betrayal from the inside. Say so you were quite hospitable. Okay, so it's not just it's not just he's it's not just Lionheart doesn't know who this guy is cuz he just said Salem said that you we're always hospitable. This guy knows that he's a bad guy, and they're still... The, the fuck? <laughs> uh-uh. The fucking chapter name, you're right! It's no safe haven because... 
it's not safe because they've already been there's a there's a there's a rat there's a rat inside they've already been not not corrupted uh compromised the, the the situation's already been compromised it's not safe here because salem already has a man inside and the man inside is ospin's a man on the inside there is a poster i freaking hope obviously ranger oh yeah and he said ruby said that they were that crow's going to take them to see lionheart i can only hope that crow knows lionheart well enough that he will be able to somehow pick up that something is wrong with the guy. That's the only thing I can hope. It's gonna get way worse. Yeah, I believe you. This that's what this show is. Everything gets things get better marginally and then they get way worse. I can only hope that that happens. But like, come on, man, this was supposed to be a, a the the good place to end up after traveling for so long and it's not even safe. <laughs> this place isn't even safe. Are any of the academies safe? Because at this point, the only one that's okay is... I was gonna... I was gonna say that Atlas is okay, but Ironwood's getting real fascist over there, so I don't know if that one's okay. So far, the only one that's okay is the one that's in vacuo, and it's only because we don't know anything about it. <laughs> Because I bet you, as soon as we learn anything about Vacuo, it's going to be like, oh yeah, actually, I've been growing grim in the basement of the Academy this whole time, and I've been letting building an army, and blah, 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 and it's like, it's going to be, there's going to be some nonsense that's going to be like, yeah, actually, nowhere is safe. Have you considered nowhere is safe? But, like, Come on, man. I was looking forward to them getting to Haven, because I was looking forward to them... Since they can't talk to Ozpin... Well, I mean, I guess they will eventually, because Oscar's on his way here, and he can be a telephone and be like, yeah, Ozpin says this, if they believe him. But, like, uh, I was looking forward to them being able to talk to someone in the know to verify that what Crow is saying is the truth. Because, like, I know that Ruby trusts him, but I can understand why people who aren't, why the rest of Ranger wouldn't. I was looking forward to them being able to confirm that what he's saying is true and also be like, finally we have some a person of authority who can help us with this, but... But apparently not! <laughs> Apparently fucking not, because <laughs> I can't ever be happy. I'm going to skip ahead. I'm going to skip ahead to the freaking after credit scene now. There we go, it's after credit scene. I'll skip, I'll skip freaking head. Look, I still have faith that people want, I, it's not, look, I, okay, I gotta pause now. It's not because they're an authority. It's because I believe that people want to help each other. That's the point of this show. I believe in the, the good hearts of the people who live in this world, that they're not all evil. I'm just shut up about the heart of the cards. Don't you Yu-Gi-Oh at me. Crow in a bar, what else is new? Excuse me. <gasps> His boy! You know, I don't and think Crow's just like, you are a child, get out of the bar. Shut up, I'm getting there. I wonder how crazy Oscar must look to, like, everyone. Um, I'm supposed to tell you. I'd like my cane back. Oh, that must be like a code word. It's 
It's good to see you again, Oz. Oh! That's a good way to end that! That's a good way to end that with the... With uh, Oscar finding the group, or at least finding Crow, and Crow can lead him to the rest of the group. Did... Hold on a sec. How did Ozpin... Because Oscar would have no idea. How did Ozpin know that Crow was going to be in that bar? Did they... Did he just have Oscar wandering through every bar in this freaking city until they found Crow? <laughs> This poor kid going into so many bars after living on a farm and seeing so many strange people and just being like, huh, where's this one shady guy I'm looking for? And Osmond just looks around and is like, uh-uh, not here, next bar, kid. How long has Oscar been wandering around this city looking for Crow? Go up to the strange, heavily armed drunk man and ask to see his cane. Yeah. Aragorn ass bitch. You are incredibly shady looking, Crow. But I do like that the way that that Crow knows that it's Ozpin or that it's the next that Oscar has Ozpin's soul husband i guess his aura yeah that is because he asked for his cane back because that's a thing that is so iconic of ozpin is that he constantly has this cane with him hey ozpin i think your man must have left there's just this weird drunk guy oh yeah that is good proof see that's the sort of thing that i was hoping for with that's the sort of thing I was hoping for with, uh, with Ranger getting to talk to Lionheart, is confirmation that Crow isn't just fucking with them. But it's at least good that Oscar is getting confirmation that he's not going crazy. Uh, the, the confirmation in the form of somebody, unless he is crazy and Crow's just feeding into his delusion, but, like, that's a pretty good confirmation that he's doing, that he's not crazy, that this isn't all in his head, that I mean that the situation is fucked, but at least he's sane. Oscar is a very small 30-year-old. Oh, someone said, where is it? Somebody said the, the shipping game thing. Today is a double feature because it's the finale. Okay, and the two ships are Martial Arcs and Solar Flare. Well, Martial Arcs, I can assume one of the people is Jean, because, like, Arc. <laughs> That one's pretty obvious. But who would the other person be? Um... Martial Arts is clearly a play on Martial Arts. So who would it be? If it's Martial... If it's, if it's Martial Arts, then I would guess it's either... It's either Blake or Ren. Because they both have the sort of ninja... Ninja aesthetic going on. I think someone said what Blake and Jean is already, and it's not that, so I'm gonna say that one is... I'm gonna say that one's Ren and Jean. Hey, I can't remember what, what Jean and Blake is. I think somebody mentioned it before, but I can't remember what it is at this point. I know it wasn't- I knew it wasn't martial arts, because that didn't sound familiar. Nightshade. Nightshade, of course. Leaning more into the darkness thing than the... I bet a lot of Blake's ones have, like, cat puns in them, don't they? Okay, Solar Flare. Solar Flare. Well, again, because Solar, I'm gonna guess that one of the people is Sun, because Solar. But who would the other person be? This is a lot less obvious. Solar flare, solar flare. See, I'm I'm trying not to get into my space nerd side of really knowing what a solar flare is, but oh yeah, the belladonna flower is a nightshade. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Uh, they're all puns. It's not just Blake's ones that are puns. They're all puns. That's the point. <laughs> I now understand why Pilot is constantly complaining about not being able to come up with shit names. She is so bad at coming up with puns. Um, it's also a pun. Ha! Ah, it's a double entendre. Very nice. Uh, okay, so Solar Flare is definitely Sun and someone else. Are any of these ones that you're giving me, like, are they, are, are any of them, <laughs> yeah, fine, there's also Arcos, and I guess Renora, the ones that are normal, and then all the fucking pun ones. Are there, I was gonna ask, though, are there, are any of the ones on these more than two people? Because if they're more than two people, then I'm gonna have real trouble. <laughs> the Titanic now. Don't you start with me. Don't you fucking start with me. Okay, so this one is just two people. Okay, so you'll- thanks. Uh, It's just two people, so one of them is definitely Sun, because Solar. And for- Again, I'm trying not to get in my space nerd shit of what a solar flare actually is. Because it's probably not that deep. <laughs> I really- oh, God. I feel like it either has something to do with- With- I feel like it has something to do with, like, fire. But I don't know- <laughs> I know some of these are real crack shippy, but I really can't see it being Sun and Cinder. <laughs> that would be a real- <laughs> That would be a real out there one. So I, I don't know. I know that one. I, 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 I'm gonna say that I don't know. I would. I know that one of them is. I know that one. One of them has to be Sun, but I don't know who the other one is. Oh right. I forgot about. I forgot that Sun's that Yang's name literally means Sunny Dragon. So it's not. It, it's. It's about how they're both related to the sun. Okay, 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 that makes sense. You said fire. Oh, and she does have... Fucking Christ, she does have fire as her sort of thing, doesn't she? Ruby, Jean, Nora, and Ren is called Power Rangers. That's really good. That's real- Power Rangers is really good. Oh, now that you've mentioned, now that you've mentioned Haha ha, Blake's fantasies, there's gotta be a, a poly ship for, there's gotta be a, like, Blake has two hands thing for, for her and Sun and Yang, right? There's gotta be a poly ship for them. Is it, if it's part of the, if it's part of the game, don't tell me what it is. But, but you guys, I think... Is there somewhere where they, like, collect all of these ship names? Because, my god, I would not be able to remember all of these. You have a fucking spreadsheet. Of course you do. Of course there's a fucking spreadsheet. Ask Pilot. Does Pilot have a spreadsheet? I mean, why am I asking if Pilot has a spreadsheet? Pilot has spreadsheets for fucking everything. The most complete one is Curtis. Oh, that's nice! Good for her. So, I guess it's now it's time to do the, the wrap-up stuff. It has basically everyone. Oh, so it's more, it's not so much, this is, a, some, this is what someone ships, so we're gonna put it on the list. It's literally just like, this is every character in the fucking show, and goddamn. It's just an excuse to come up with puns, isn't it? You just, you just were like, hey... I don't actually care if these characters have ever interacted. Let's come up with a pun name for them. That's kind of funny, actually. I believe that. I bet it wasn't that hard. There's gotta be- from the- I mean, this- the show has so many characters in it. There's gotta be so many freaking over- There's so many combinations. I need the characters to interact to ship them. <laughs> But yeah, I guess I should do the wrap-up stuff. So, I know it's been a really long time coming, but we're finally done Volume 4! Volume 4 is done! <laughs> I'm free! 
I can finally listen to the music from this volume. I can finally move on to volume five. Maybe someday I'll get to see Yang on screen with Ruby again. Someday they'll reunite. Um, I really liked this volume, actually. I liked how, first and foremost, I really liked that the writers didn't gloss over any of the pain and trauma that going through the fall of Beacon would have caused these characters. I love that they actually went into it in depth in multiple different ways to show how it's affecting the characters differently. That some of them are dealing with it better than others. Some of them are dealing with it really badly. Looking at you, Ruby and John, you guys aren't dealing with it at all. Uh, but, and that they're even when they're dealing with it badly, they're doing it in different ways. Or if they're dealing with it well, they're doing it in different ways. Like, like Weiss is seemed to be dealing with the trauma of the fall of Beacon okay, or at least better than better than Ruby and John. And Blake, honestly. Blake did not deal with the trauma of the fall of Beacon well, but to be fair, there's there's reasons for that. There's compounding reasons for why for that. Uh, but I I really loved that they didn't shy away from showing these characters going through trauma. I'm not saying that Weiss went through the least because it's all the, comparing trauma is not it's it's just not useful. Everyone deals with things differently. You could go through something that's not that you could say is comparably worse better than what someone else went through, but it you deal with it worse, so I'm not gonna- I'm not gonna get into that. How many times do I think John watched that video? Too many times. I'm gonna leave it at that. The fact that... He... <sighs> my boy. Um, he listened to it too many times. It was all- it, the video itself was only, like, a minute and a half long, two minutes long, and then he looped and listened to it again. He, to our knowledge, he had already listened to it several times just that night. And they were on the road for months, so presumably he listened to it hundreds, maybe thousands of times. Cause, be kind, everyone is fighting a battle you know nothing about. Yeah, exactly. I can believe, I can fully believe that Jean has listened to it enough times to quote it word for word, which is, which is too many times. He was tor he's torturing himself with the knowledge of how of the relationship they could have had if, in his mind, he had been better, if he had been faster, all that nonsense. But my God, how many times did I watch that? <laughs> did you watch that video of Jean watching that video again? Probably too many times. I can see that for. For the people who love John, me, and I'm aware, Pilot. Uh, I bet that, that I haven't rewatched it because I I don't have time. <laughs> I don't have time to rewatch any of this shit. But I bet that that y'all angst lovers rewatch that shit all the fucking time. Who was my favorite character that I've met this volume? Definitely Oscar. I love even all the the Ozpin stuff aside. I. It's nice to have an everyman character. I've always loved the characters that get dropped into a world that they don't, that they're not prepared for. I've always loved those characters. But yeah, I mentioned that. I love that the, the now that we've, now that the episode is finished, I can talk more in depth about how freaking upset I am about his 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 upgrade. I'm putting upgrade in very generous quotes because it's not an upgrade, it's a downgrade. Even from a from various standpoints. From a mechanical standpoint, he has literally never fought with only a sword. He has only ever fought with a sword and a shield. And the two things there is overlap obviously, but the two things are not comparable. You can't you can't go from being relatively competent with fighting with a sword and a shield and then only go to fighting with a sword and expect to do just as well. You just can't. That's it, the it, it, it's it's just not comparable. They're 
two completely different skill sets. And then there's the symbolism of him literally sacrificing his defenses to be able to hit things harder. Of him wanting to not defend himself so that he can hurt things more. Because that's what he thinks, and he's wrong, that's what he thinks caused Pyrrha to leave him behind, is that he wasn't good enough to be able to go and fight with her on the tower. Of course, Pyrrha left him behind because she cares about him too much to put him in danger. But in John's head, he became the, the damsel in distress in the tree who can't defend himself or is and isn't strong enough to fight at his friend's side. So he literally is like, well, fine then. If it's strength they need, then I'll stop defending myself and become as strong as I can. But, but in doing so, he can't defend himself. He's literally... It's the self-sacrificial stuff that he's been getting into that now that this has happened, I'm sure is going to come up a lot more in the next season, which is yay. Yeah, okay, I will acknowledge that. It is an upgrade. He has more options now, which he didn't before, but like you said, it's up to him to know when to use which. And I know he's the strategist, but he is also extremely, extremely guided by his emotions. I do not trust him to be able to make the decision for himself to know what is the correct choice to make. I don't trust him to know that I need to defend myself more than I need to kill this thing. I don't trust him to know that he needs to make that decision. Yeah, well, it's about, it's a big recurring thing in Ruby that you need to, that their strength and num numbers and that working together is always going to be stronger. It's why it was made so clear that Pyrrha sending Jean away was a bad decision, even if it had gotten them both hurt. Uh, or that Ozpin keeping everything to himself was a bad decision, because if he had told people, then they... If he had told people, then they could have, like... They could have worked together to come up with a better, a better thing to do. It's why Ironwood blocking off Atlas from the world was framed as a bad decision, because if... It, Atlas isn't going to be able to defend itself against Salem if it's just by itself. It's a big recurring thing in this show that you need other people to be at your best. You, you, you can't be... No man is an island. You can't just work with yourself to be able to, to do it. That's true. That it's been made more clear in this volume that Jean feels like he can only be useful if he is able to to fight things not he doesn't feel useful in that he can protect his friends he doesn't feel useful when all he has is the shield to to stand in the way of other things he feels like he can only be useful if he's doing what honestly most huntsmen do which is killing grim he doesn't he wants to be able to be like other people and he isn't able to accept the strengths that he has, which freaking sucks. And I wish that he understood that he has value in his own way and that he doesn't have to be other people. Yeah. For one thing, just strategically, it's not a good idea to have everyone be, to have everyone be so offensively focused. It's a good idea to spread out what your team does. But also from just like a meta point of view, him literally sacrificing the defense of himself because he wants to hit things harder. It's like, my god, man, we just say that you want to die. Just It would be less subtle if you just said it out loud than what you're doing here. Where do I think the show is going from here? Okay, let's start with just volume five, because like you said, this is going to be a long question. Just volume five. Everyone's going to meet up in Mistral. That's being telegraphed so clearly. Uh, 
Everyone is gonna meet up in Mistral. I think it's gonna take Blake a little longer because she's got stuff to do in Menagerie still, whereas everyone else is on their way. Uh, there's clearly going to be Iron, the, uh, I don't think Ironwood's gonna be involved in this at all because we're not in Atlas anymore. But Lionheart, Lion, their, Lionheart's betrayal is going to be made clear to everyone. And there's going to be some serious fallout from that. Apollo, get your dodgeball ready. Ha ha ha. You asked me to do this, don't you? Um. They mentioned in Crow's little, in Crow's little uh, exposition dump, he mentioned that sort of the point of the academies is that they are there to protect the relics. So I think since we are going to an academy and we now know about the relics that we are going to actually get one of them. I don't know if we'll see what they do because I think they do things, right? But I think we're going to get one of the relics. It'll probably be at the end of the volume because that won't be the focus. But I think that they'll have one of the relics by the end. I don't remember I don't remember which if they said which ones go with which academies. Because there's four of them. There's uh, creation, destruction, knowledge. There's another one. I don't remember what the last one is. But I don't remember if they said which ones go with which academies. But they're gonna have one of them by the time they get to the end of the volume. That's a that's a prediction number one. I don't even know what the relics look like. <laughs> <laughs> they could be <laughs> they could be coffee mugs for all I fucking know. Um, so prediction number one. They are going to have one of the relics before the end of the volume. It might be in the last fucking 15 minutes of the volume, but they're going to have one of them. Um Okay, what else? They mentioned that there are there's troop movements. There's there there's Ironwood mentioned that there's nonsense going on in Mistral, so it seems likely that there that Salem is planning an attack of some kind in Mistral. I don't know if it's going to be as bold or not bold, because they're all it's bold regardless of what they do. I don't know if it's going to be as publicized as the one in Vale was, because the point of the one in Vale was to basically put her on the world stage. Well, not her, because she's still working the shadows, but to, like, put the the attack on the world stage and show people fighting each other, people from different kingdoms fighting each other, to sow dissent. So, the point of... Uh, so, I don't know if that she's going to do that again, because the dissent is already there, or if she's just going to... If she's going to try to be more subtle with this one. Because she can be more subtle with this one, because the headmaster of this academy is working with her to some extent. <clears throat> it lets him choose what kind of beverage is in the cup at any time. Relic of choice. Here we go. That's all it does. The other ones do like fantastical <laughs> stuff and the relic of choice just is like, do you want cream soda or do you want hot chocolate? Here we go. Um, but so prediction number two, there's, they're either going to there's either going to be an, a, an attack on the academy or there's going to be some significant strides towards, towards an attack on the academy. That seems to be where this is going. I don't fucking know what's happening with the White Fang. They said that they're, he's, they said that Adam is planning a coup of some kind, but I don't know what that entails at all. I ha we haven't even met the leader of the White Fang currently. I don't remember her name. Haha, <laughs> DBZ abridged reference. Very nice. Uh, okay, what else is happening? I don't know what's gonna happen with Weiss. Yang seems like she- I can guess what's happening with Yang. She's either going to go and bike straight to Ruby. And again, I don't know how she will find Ruby. Because she's not gonna get that letter with their address. Weiss is hanging out with Pilot. Not the character, the person in real life. <laughs> Weiss is real now. That's her that's what her character arc can be five is. She's real now. She's in the real world. Um I, but yeah, I don't know how Yang is gonna find Ruby, because she wasn't it, the letter's not gonna make it to her home, even if she was there to read it. So I don't know how she's gonna find that. Or she could go see Raven. 
And personally, I think she's going to go see Ruby, but this would also be probably her one and only opportunity to go see Raven before she gets back into the nonsense of the plot. Um, what is Weiss going to do? Obviously, she's flying to Mistral with Pilot. Again, the real person, not the character. She's flying to Mistral. And she's going to go meet up with Winter? I don't know where Winter is. I guess she's probably in the capital. But, yeah, that's... Uh, as far as I know, that's that's all I've got for what Weiss is doing. Weiss finds the rooster t- <laughs> She would fucking fight them to avenge Pyrrha. Because, again, these kids all care about each other so fucking much. Um, and Blake is gonna do- she's trying to reform the White Fang, which I guess mean- she, it's not a good idea to try taking it right to the source, especially since the source seems to be where Adam is going, and that would be a bad idea. Because she- even though she's doing better, she still doesn't seem emotionally prepared to confront him. But- so I guess she's gonna stay on Menagerie for a while and try to start a grassroots movement? I don't know. But what else predictions do I have? Uh, I don't know. Maybe another Maiden? I don't know which one we're on. I don't know which season it's supposed to be that we're seeing now, if it's... If it's spring or winter or summer, I don't know which season it is, but I, but we're probably going to start getting hints at a new maiden. Because I assume it just makes sense. Everything in Ruby is divided into four. There's four people on each team. There's four relics. There's four maidens. There's four kingdoms, blah, blah, blah. It makes sense if it's divided evenly that there's a... that there would be... A, just like there's a that there's four kingdoms, so if they're trying to space things out well, that there would be a maiden in each kingdom. Even if there's no reason for her to be there, that would be a good way to make sure that they're spaced out evenly. So, I don't know which maiden it is. Menagerie is its own kingdom, but nobody in the world counts Menagerie as its own kingdom because of racism. Um... But, so yeah, I think there's going to be another, there's going to, we're going to start getting hints at a new maiden in the next volume. Again, I don't know which season she's going to be. No, but none of them have kings. Well, they all used, presumably they all used to have kings, but. So, yeah, those are my, those are my predictions. I'm excited to, so yeah, I'm going to gonna head out thank you all for for joining me it was really good thank you all for for joining me it was you guys are so supportive and i love that you love this and to everyone who is is on patreon thank you to you guys because again it it means so much to me that you guys are willing to invest money in me doing this nonsense but th th I'll be back on Friday with the character shorts. So yeah, bye.